Wow, that's a lot of questions we talked about this morning. Whew. Let's go in our Bible here to talk just for a few minutes about the law. All right, just a few minutes. We're just going to scratch the surface again here. And it is interesting that we were talking about these rules and regulations and rituals because a lot of that is what was happening in the New Testament. Let's go to Acts 15 here real quick. Acts 15, and I'm just, just going to talk about the Judaizers for a moment. Acts chapter 15, the Judaizers. Really what they were is they were Jews who refused to be converted. Don't want to overlook that. The gospel has spread now throughout pretty much the whole known world, and it's going to through the book of Acts, through Paul's preaching and missionary journeys. And throughout all of those regions, there were Jews that were scattered abroad. And the Bible tells us that throughout all of the Jewry, as a, again, the other word in the Bible, there were people, as the Bible says, he came unto his own, but what? His own received him not. They refused to be converted. In fact, uh, the preaching there in one place, uh, I believe it was Stephen, he said, how oft, he said, but, or forgive me, he said these words, you do resist the Holy Ghost. That's what they were doing. And uh, Paul was preaching to them constantly. He would go into the synagogues three weeks as his manner was. Sometimes at one place there he, he had liberty. He went in as long as three months, I believe, into the synagogue. But usually it was just a couple of weeks. And before you knew it, there was a couple that said, yes, we're going to continue in the grace of God. We're going to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. But there were always that other group that said, we're not only going to reject it, but we're going to fight against it. And so the devil knew in his efforts to overthrow the gospel, and I do say efforts, he was not successful, amen, um, that uh, he had to do something, if not to reject what Christ did altogether, let's take and do a mixture of the law with grace. Let's take some of that Old Testament faith and mix it with New Testament faith, and let's make something that's an amalgamation. And, and, and what it comes down to is this, the ultimate effort of this false religion of continuing in the Old Testament law and keeping your salvation or earning your salvation through Old Testament law with Christ is bringing someone into bondage rather than liberty. Bringing someone that close to being saved but never seeing them saved. Paul described in the book of Galatians is falling from grace. Getting right to the point of understanding what salvation is, but because you don't accept the grace of God that saves you, the grace of God that would change you in the fact that you can't work out your own salvation, but you need to trust Christ for it totally and completely through his merit and not of your own. Paul said you get right to that point where you stumble at the rock of offense, Jesus Christ. What they were doing is they were falling from grace instead of falling on the Lord. They were one step away from being born again. And we'll see that here when it pertains to the law. In Acts chapter 15, we find a, an, an incident that happened here, and we see a group of, of so-called believers that were trying to bring people under this Old Testament bondage. Acts chapter 15, notice what it says. And, and just many of you know the history of the book of Acts as the, of the apostles. At this point, Christ has been resurrected. Christ went returned to heaven. Christ is now being preached. Uh, by all of the apostles, the churches are being planted, the word of God is going forth in many directions, and uh, the world is being turned upside down. And in Acts chapter 15, we find this move, and let's say it this way, this sedition, this against God, this heretic uh, movement called Judaism, or if you would, Judaizers often referred to. It says in verse 1, a certain man which came down from Judea, taught the brethren and said, except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, you cannot be saved. So what were they doing? They're taking and bringing in Old Testament. That's what they're doing. When therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem under the apostles and elders about this question. Now, the Bible says that we are to there are what's called doubtful disputations. There's some things in the Bible that we should not 
over-argue or over-discuss or over-dispute with people. Doubtful disputations. There's some things we're sort of like, well, we're pretty sure on this area, but we're not certain. Those kind of things, like what we were talking about a little bit this morning. But when it comes to matters of salvation, this is a dispute that's worthy of our time and efforts. This is something that needs to be earnestly contended for, the Bible says, right? So that's why they were no small dissension and disputation. They said, wait a minute, you boys, you understand what you're doing? You're preaching another gospel. That's what you're doing right here. And um, we know in the scripture, it tells us that after the first and second admonition, we're to reject them as a heretic because they are condemned of themselves. See, and a reprobate mind is not just somebody who cannot be unsaved. That's what often people think that means. A reprobate mind is someone who's rejected God's word and so therefore cannot receive God's word. They are a hardened heart whose minds are the opposite of what God wants in their life. And that's what these men are. So everything that uh, was done on the cross of Calvary through Jesus Christ, that's why these men are now referred to as Paul as being warned to the believers, he said, especially those of the circumcision. He said, beware of who? The circumcision. And in another scripture, he calls them this, the enemies of the cross of Christ. Why, does, why did Paul call them that? Because when you oppose God and the salvation that he has for you freely through his son, what you do then is not just reject it, but you also fight against it. They are opposing. They make themselves to be the enemies of God. There is no neutral ground when it comes to the gospel. You're either for it or you're against it. You're either with God or you're against God. That's what Jesus said, amen. So these men who had rejected Christ now said, well, wait a minute, we, we, don't, we reject Christ, but now we'll make a, a, a next step, and that is we'll find this in-between middle ground and say you're not just saved by the Old Testament law, but now you're saved Old Testament law with Christ. See, this is... And I have to say this, we often give the devil little credit, but he is a very intelligent angel. Uh, the gospel perverted, listen to me, is just a little off of the truth of the gospel. It's just a little off. Now, Galatians, uh, ex, uh, Galatians chapter 1, look what Paul said here. Hold your hand in Acts chapter 15. Galatians chapter 1. Paul tells us here, anyone who preaches a false gospel is accursed. And can we say today, anybody who believes a false gospel is accursed. And this false gospel of bringing in the Old Testament rules and regulation was causing people to doubt their faith. And can I say this? It was also causing people to not come to saving faith. Very important to understand that not everyone who believes you can lose your salvation today are actually saved. Today we have what's called an Arminiast. And some people would come to the idea and they'll say, well, all Arminiasts are, are lost. Well, not necessarily. There could be some people who trusted Christ by faith in a false gospel church, but then later the preacher comes in and says, now be good and do the right thing and obey God and keep His commandments and you keep your salvation. But I do believe that some of those people have actually gotten saved and are not saved because they believed a false gospel that they cannot keep their salvation unless they are good. So what I'm saying is there's two things happening with this false gospel, this Old Testament Judaism coming into the New Testament. Number one, people who were saved and truly born again are now doubting their salvation and they don't have the peace they're moving from that grace that, that they can stand in. And they're, they're saying, oh, no, well, what if I'm not really saved? What if I have to do all these other things to continue to be saved? And then there's a second group who's really not getting saved because they think they have to do something to please God. Salvation is what? By grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. See, that's not just a reminder of our salvation, but it's also a requirement for salvation. By grace are you saved. So there's two things happening with this false gospel. Believers are doubting their salvation and unbelievers are thinking they have salvation through what's happening in Acts chapter 15. And Paul said in Galatians chapter 1, he warned us, he said, um, verse 6, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another. 
But there are some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we or an angel from heaven, notice Paul said we, because there was always false prophets in every level of Christianity. And it could even be with some of his brethren, he said, people that said they were with him. Preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you. Let him be accursed. As we've said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that you have received, let him be accursed. And of course, we know there are many false gospels today. But this teaching of, Jew, of Old Testament law in Acts 15 verse 1 was now being amalgamated into New Testament grace. And of course, we know the Bible says it's either of works or it's of grace. And it's of grace and it's no more works. And it's of works, it's no more grace. We see Romans 6.14 here. Let's look at just a couple of verses here because we're just about out of time. Romans chapter 6, verse 14. We find our position when it comes to the law. Our position when it comes to the law. And if you read on in Acts chapter 15, you'll find it out there that they said, look, we don't know what you're preaching, but we know it's wrong. And they went up to Jerusalem. They had the council. They prayed about it. They said, we got a big issue here. And so basically they said, don't eat anything strangled. Don't eat the blood, just like God told us. And he said, otherwise, we're to continue in the grace of God, the New Testament dispensation that we live in. They, they recognized the Holy Spirit uh, made a separation there from the Old Testament and said, you're not under those rules and regulations anymore. Okay, Signifying by the Spirit. Romans 6.14, we read this. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. So God tells us we're free from that Old Testament law. In fact, Romans chapter 10, let's look at this. Romans chapter 10, verse 4, tells us. Now, and, and it's always the same accusation that we get too. Well, you know, it's the same thing that the people say that you can lose your salvation. I'm sure they said the same thing there. Well, you just think that you can do whatever you want and God doesn't care. Like you, that word of God doesn't matter anymore. No, it's not the idea. We were we have been moved to a new disp new dispensation. We're in the New Testament. Christ was the end. We'll read that here. Romans chapter 10. Watch this. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. So how was righteousness fulfilled in the Old Testament? The Bible says they had to keep those things. They had to do those things. According to the New Testament, we find righteousness is found through Christ. Christ is the end of the law. When somebody says to you, well, no, 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 no. You have to do this, this, and this, and this to maintain your salvation. In this case, they said you have to be circumcised. The Bible tells us here Christ is the law. Uh, let's go to a few more verses on this. Galatians 3. Let's go back there. Galatians 3, several verses here in Galatians referring to this. So again, we're not saying you're free from having to obey God's commandments. We're saying you're free from the ceremonial law that was in the Old Testament. You no longer have to keep the sacrifice. You no longer have to be circumcised exactly on the eighth day. You no longer uh, have to go through the three uh, feasts that we have to come, you know, every year to. We no longer have to have the Day of Atonement. We no longer have to have uh, the out seven days outside the camp. I mean, because if you if you get if you get to this, you, there's a no end of it, basically. Which what point do you cut it off when you go back into that old testament law? If that's the case, if, if circumcision was necessary, well then what else is necessary? How is it that circumcision takes place over you know any other law? See, basically they were saying not just circumcision, but also the entirety of that old testament law, trying to bring them back into that bondage. We find here Galatians 3.10 For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. So here's the thing. When a person says, I have to go back to the Old Testament law to fulfill the righteousness of God, the righteous requirements of God, what you're doing is saying, I now have to do all of those things. And in reality... Man could never fulfill those things even though he was commanded to do it. All of those were, pre, uh, if you would, shadow of the things that Christ would fulfill. 
when he came in the flesh in the New Testament. Very important to understand that. Uh, even all of the sacrifices. Have you read about the sin offering, the trespass offering, the heave offering, the wave offering? You just go down through there at all of those offerings and you're going to find out after even all of that was done, each time a person would sin, still guess what happened once a year? The Day of Atonement. Why? Because man could not atone for his own righteousness through those ceremonial things. So if it was not good enough in the Old Testament that the blood of bull and goats, as the book of Hebrews says, could cleanse men, how could it be good enough in the New Testament? It, it doesn't make any sense to, to just concisely try to make a statement like that. And um, so, and that's a Hebrews scripture there. We don't have time to read everything I just quoted. Um, but let's look at this here. Galatians chapter 3, verse number 10, and now 11, but that verse 11 is very clear. Watch. But that no man, is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident, for the just shall live by faith. Amen. Salvation wasn't found in those rituals in the Old Testament. It was never in that sacrifice. It was never salvation there. That was a, a picture of the faith of those people that they eventually even put in Jesus Christ. And some people believe that when Jesus Christ went down to the heart of the earth that he presented himself to the Old Testament saints and said, look, here I am, the Lamb of God, which would take away the sins of the world. And that's why they didn't go up to heaven before Jesus Christ came and died here on earth. Because they couldn't even go there by any of their righteousness in the Old Testament, but they believed by faith, did what God told them to do by faith. And all of a sudden the Messiah came and they looked at him and said, all right, we're ready to go. You're our Messiah. You're the one we're trusting. So there's, there's some deepness to this in the idea that even those who were under that Old Testament, Old Testament ceremonial law, they were not saved by that. They were saved by faith, the Bible says. The just shall live by faith. Four times in the Word of God we find that. Hebrews 11 is all about the Old Testament. Every bit of it. And what does the Bible say? By works, by works, by works. No. What's the theme of Hebrews chapter 11? By faith. By faith. So, yes, the Old Testament was law, but Old Testament still pointed to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And those people were saved by faith. They were not saved by works as some people think. Because it is possible for the Old Testament that people could go through those things and still die. And still be outside of God. It was very possible. It was by faith. And again, we don't quite understand that today because we're not in that dispensation. But we know that they couldn't be saved by any other way but by faith. Now... Uh, Galatians reading on verse number 13 Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law being made a curse for us for it is written cursed is everyone that hangeth on the tree and then it goes on to talk more about this promise that was given the promise that was given um, let's go to one more Ephesians 2.15 Ephesians 2.15 that clock is my enemy <laughs> and so you just said no that's my friend Ephesians 2.15, good verse here. Uh, look, at, look at verse number uh, 13. Verse number 13. But now in Christ, ye who sometimes were afar off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, who hath made both one, and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain, one new man, so making peace, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. And came and preached peace to you which were far off and to them that were nigh, for through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. So we find the way to God was never through rules and regulations and rituals, but it was actually still through a relationship with Jesus Christ. It has always been that same way. That wall has been broken down. In fact, the Bible tells us here that the veil was taken away. I find that interesting that the day of Christ, I believe three places there in the scripture, it tells us when he died on Calvary that the veil was rent in the temple right in half. That place where man was no longer before able to go, only the high priest was, now all men could come to God through the Lord Jesus Christ as a high priest. And 
and I know this is important, God told us which way the veil was torn from the top down. All right? Salvation came from God through heaven, through Christ. It's not through us. Because man could rip it up. All right? If he would. But God ripped it from the top down. And I do find that interesting that that's in the Bible. Guys, there's a lot more here we need to talk about, but I think that's where we'll end today. The Bible tells us here, He blots out the handwriting and the ordinances that are against us. That Old Testament, man, that's against us. It's not... It wasn't there to make things right. But actually it was brought as a curse. We'll we'll pick up here next week. And um, a lot of things here this morning that we have discussed and talked about. Enjoyed greatly this first hour. I hope that it was a blessing to you as well. Let's bow our heads here today just for a moment. There are a lot of different sects and groups that are trying to preach this Old Testament law. Um many different flavors of people, Sabbath keepers, uh, you know. But the reality of it is we're saved by the grace of God. We are living in New Testament times. And next week uh, we'll pick up, we'll see actually where Paul did some things, not because he was under that Old Testament law, but because he wanted those who were still on the verge of making a decision for Christ, that they would come to the Lord. We'll find that Timothy, uh, he had circumcised. We'll we'll find uh, that Paul himself was observing some of those Old Testament things. And it wasn't because he had to. It was because he wanted to win those people to Christ. He was in a transitional period where he wanted to be all things to all men, to win the Jews to Christ. He did some of those Jewish traditions, not because he had to, but because he himself was that Jewish background. And so we're going to deal with some of that and, and try to come up with some answers as well for uh, you know, somebody who would say to us, well, what about all this stuff in the New Testament where, where some of these Old Testament things are coming up? Why, why did they happen and, and what purpose do they serve? And we'll see as well uh, perhaps maybe some things that we can do in our life to reach some of those same people in our time. Let's bow our heads. Father, thank you again for this time. Thank you, Lord, for our Bible study. Oh, wow, Bible training. Uh, There's so much that we have through the precious Word of God and the Holy Spirit, our teacher that can guide us into all truth. We thank you for the subjects that were handled this morning. We thank you, Lord, for the the instruction in righteousness. Lord, help us have a heart that is sensitive to you in every area. And uh, Lord, if someone seeks to try to bring us under their own rules and regulations that are outside of what the Spirit of Christ wants to teach us. I pray that we'd identify with you. And Lord, not fear what men think of us or what they'll say of us because we don't preach and have maybe the same standards that they do. Lord, we thank you for your precious word. And we thank you for the liberty we have to be born again, to be free from all of that curse of the law, the Old Testament. But Lord, certainly help us to always... uh, have reverence and respect and honor for the things of God and never just to throw out the baby with the bathwater, as the saying is. For we know much in the Old Testament is very applicable to our lives today. And we need to reverence it. We need to honor it. We need to respect it and think on it, Lord, as well. So uh, we just thank you. Be with us here in this next hour. Thank you again for those that have come. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.